Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Jesus ascended and is lost from the disciples' eyes. Suddenly, he's gone. After the incredible joy of Easter, the Lord disappears. Perhaps the disciples felt alone, lost, confused, discouraged. Perhaps they wondered how they would do all the work without him by their side. How could they possibly be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even the ends of the earth without his help? But Jesus was not truly gone. He ascended to the right hand of the Father, and the Father, is ever. Jesus was again fully using his power as the Son of God. He was using his omnipresence so that he could fill all things in heaven and on earth. He actually became closer to the disciples on the day that he ascended than he had ever been during his earthly ministry. He was not really gone at all. And so also Jesus is with us, with his church, although he is hidden from sight. As he said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The promise is not only for the disciples, not only for preachers, but is for all. And nor is the promise merely for the emotions, as if Jesus had said, I'll be with you as long as you remember me in your heart. No, Jesus is really here, the Son of Man and the Son of God among us today. And neither then is his presence a, a sort of useless fact. We might be tempted to think that it makes no difference that Jesus is everywhere simply because by our eyes, by our hands, we cannot see it. Touch it, hear it. But it does make a difference. Jesus fills all things on purpose. He does it for the sake of his bride, the church. He does it when the pastor says, I forgive you all your sins. For then we are really hearing the voice of Jesus. The absolution is the forgiveness of the ascended Son of God. And we can hear Jesus, although not directly. We hear him through the voice of the Word. We hear Jesus speak. In his holy scriptures, we hear him proclaim his gospel. And through the preaching, we hear the Lord of heaven speak to us here on earth. Because he is also here with us. He is not really gone. And we also see and touch Jesus here in the sacrament. His body and his blood given for us to forgive our sins. And the ascended Lord fills all things, especially the bread and the wine. He unites himself with these lowly, common, earthly things. He does this for us. But often we are like the disciples. Instead of realizing how close Jesus is to us, all we focus on is how we feel, how powerless, how distant our Lord seems. We might even gaze up into the heavens wistfully, yearning for his presence, like the disciples did in the book of Acts. When we fight against sin and temptation, we're often frustrated by the endless struggle. Sometimes all we gain from our continual efforts is simply an awareness of how insidious, how powerful is that sin that dwells in our hearts. And even when we look in the other areas of our life, we sometimes labor uphill. Evangelism sometimes seems fruitless. For many a minister, it even appears that well, maybe no one's listening. 
Maybe we don't even get to do those important tasks, but instead we're mired in the administration, in bickering, in putting out those fires that spark up. Administrative tasks, secretarial business, and so forth, they seem to dominate time. Dominate the time that should be set about our father's business of the work. We try, we try to do our work, but we feel that sometimes we're only spinning our tires. In the same way, frustration finds us in all places. Parents labor endlessly for children without much appreciation or reward except on Mother's Day, right? <laughs> Students might study all night for that test and then find out that well, you're going to have to take it again. Employees dedicate themselves with loyalty, with hard work for years and years and end up being laid off. Spouses struggle to build up their marriages only to have the world tear them down. At moments of frustration, we may cry out, Where are you, Jesus? Where are you? But even if we don't give voice to this exact sentiment, our frustration may turn to bitterness or even resentment. The hiddenness of Jesus frustrates us because we want everything to work the way we think that it should work. Our sinful flesh wants to see everything through our eyes through our own ego, through our self. How does this affect me? How does it make me feel? Am I getting anything out of this? We want to judge by the effectiveness and the success that we see, just as we want to judge our goodness by our own works. And instead, we ought to see everything, everything, Jesus and through the cross. In our cross, our lives are successful because sin is erased and the blood of Jesus covers us. In him, our failures are gone. His blood forgives all our sinful resentment, all our sinful frustration, and his suffering redeems us from our discontent and our self centeredness and when we complain about how distant he seems to us, in truth, we ought to be cast away so that we might really become distant from him. Our complaining hearts should see their reward in the depths of hell for mistrusting the grace of Jesus. But instead, instead of us being cast away, Christ was cast away for us. He became distant from the Father as he was abandoned upon the cross. He suffered the real agony of separation, which is the torture of hell, so that we, we would never have to feel. And yet he also rose and he ascended. He ascended so that he could remain close by us, his beloved people. He would not abandon although he does remain invisible to our human eyes. And because he is hidden, his work, his glory among us are done in low, humble, simple, and common things. He even works through the things that we often see as failures. As far as making the church grow, it might look that we haven't brought in enough members or filled enough of the pews, but... We must remember that the ascended Lord is in his congregation doing his work through his mighty word among us, whether it looks like it's bearing out or not. Jesus himself speaks words of power through our lips as we have heard those words upon our ears. God's gospel of forgiveness passes among us and through us and out of us to others. And that word never the same Lord Jesus works among us even as he works through us. In our callings, we become the hands and the feet of Christ to do his tasks of love. He thereby exalts our lowly, faltering efforts into the very works of God. The tasks that we are tempted to think of as minor 
as insignificant are actually fantastic and divine deeds. When a mother cooks dinner for her family, the Lord has prepared that meal through her vocation. When a father brings home a paycheck from his employment, it is the Lord who has provided for the family's needs through the sweat of that man's brow. And so the ascended Lord is doing his mighty works of love among us, through us. Certainly he is not distant or absent, and we are not left alone to labor endlessly at frustrating tasks. Far from it, the ascended Lord is at work. He's exalting those humble works for his glory. So do we lack anything? If we look at ourselves and our conduct, we have to say, yes, I lack much that I ought to have. But if we look at Jesus and at his presence with us, what truly can we say we ever lack? We have the little word, the little word that overcomes even the mightiest princes of this world. And we have that holy, precious blood of the atonement. We have the spotless lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Angels will endlessly spy upon these mysteries that we receive over and over and over again. And what we receive in this house is no mere earthly thing. It is the wondrous grace of Jesus. The ascended Lord has not given us these wonders cheaply, but has done so at the price of his agony, his suffering, even to the point of death on the cross. And therefore, when we look at these wonders of Jesus and at his redemption, shall we say that we are dissatisfied? Shall we choose those cheaper human gifts rather than God's eternal grace? Shall we ask our Heavenly Father for the stone of human righteousness instead of that precious bread of life? Shall we cling to that point of pride when he has given us all things? Heaven forbid. Truly, we must pass through some troubles in this life. We must feel frustration and loneliness at times. After all, even Jesus experienced such things. But suffering comes before glory. And so let us focus then on the fantastic treasures that the ascended Lord gives us by his presence among us. His grace is more than sufficient for us. In his name and to his glory. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ.